1.5 room, huh? Yo, yo, I just came in here to figure out how y'all got the y'all got the Toronto first lady get the battery ran on her by Adam. What's the <laughs> oh, yo, no. yo, somebody oh, no. from the six got to answer that. Oh no. I asked everybody. I even oh, asked Drake. Man. Yeah, somebody got to answer. You let her go. Holy shit, dog. <laughs> oh, you, holy shit, fam. Yo, Press, what what we talking about? What are you saying, Act? What are you saying, Crow? Yo, yo, ben, fam. yo, yo, I need to know who the next first lady of Toronto, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah. As of now, we got to just that fucking... Axe scouting, axe scouting. Hey, 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 hey. Who's that? Who's that? Lady asked me. Oh, I just <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 what's the song from the city for the year? Talk to me. Movie. You know the song, the Move. same fucking song that's on your I mean, Spotify. I mean, I mean, that's I know attachments, but is that too mainstream? Is there another one I'm missing? Or side Benji dropped the hardest tape of 2021 in Toronto. Holy. Yeah, that's period. That's the only thing. So, that's the only thing tape wise. And then we have the Garner Express Deluxe that dropped this year too. And we Yo, got, Buzz. Like, you know, buzz what's where the you gonna get Benji, Benji up to my podcast, man? Spotify waiting for him. Right, right, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're, gonna we're get talking it. Michael's bag. That's what we're talking about. This shit's easy. Oh my God. That that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Is that yo, yo, Ack, you that's gotta what, that's the Michael. record of the year, Ack. Easy. Yo, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. You, you know, I'll, I'll be like watching. I'll be praying stuff on the low. I, I Niggas tell me that Moolah is getting hot in the city, man. Yeah, no, no one can stand on the stage with me. Come on. No one can stand on the stage with me over here, man. Well, yeah, what do you got for, though? I, I gotta yo, go. Cody, I gotta yo, go. I gotta get, go. I gotta go get back to my hot, work, bro? so I don't end up like Pressa, a feature what? man. You see what I'm saying? I just, I just popped in real quick just to show you. Easy but yo, you never even made it to, never any heard level it. to go back to okay? That's all. That's all you I came in here to say. But none of these guys can't stand on the stage with me. You see what I'm saying? You never made it on the mud to go back and fall off. You never made it nowhere to fall off. I'm sorry, brother. Man's cutting, fam. You never made it nowhere to fall off. Like you need to get these are the <laughs> shit that these are the shit that the man are praising yo, in the city. Bro, bro, bro. Uh, hey, yo, like yo, how the fuck are you I, saying I you're going up. back somewhere and you never even went on press's level? You never been on, you never even been on Pyrex level. Holy fuck! Like you never even been on no sort of level to go back to no sort of anywhere. You're still yeah, Rex, though. You never left. The guy's talking about credit. <laughs> And he's talking about vacations. Then that the man never been on a vacation for ten years. He's talking about he's he does credit and vacations. I never seen a man go on a vacation in ten years. Since I know this kid, he never left Rexdale, fam. I don't even I never even seen him leave the province. I never seen him. Oh, I'm in Vancouver. Or, oh, I'm in Calgary. Or oh, I'm in Edmonton. That guy didn't even go to Montreal. Like Cody, just drive to Montreal. It's six hours. At least drive there. Go a little a week weekend vacation. Like you didn't even do that. Like you don't even leave the city. Talk about yo credit and vacations. Like what's your credit score? Is yo, Ak, let me ask you a credit. quick question. Yo, what's your song of the year for twenty twenty one for Toronto rappers? I already told what's... you the song. Numbers, fucking act songs, bro. <laughs> yo, Friday. What... what else song am I gonna choose? The same what's song that song of the year. Yo, for my nigga, listen for right now. If you go to act, okay, act, yo, act. You told me this, right? You have the biggest platform for rap in America. Obviously, there's the shade room, but it's gossip. But when it comes to rap, you make and break niggas. Correct. Cool. So obviously, you know what the fuck's going on in this music industry, right? Correct. Cool. When we did the Spotify, whatever, uh, the year, whatever the case may be, in your top single songs, I seen Press's name attached and was there, fam. So yeah. that just speaks volumes. Nah, you I guys have the fuck the out of that too, man. That shit is hot, man. Yo, yo, a I, academics, I, I academics. Yo, yo, yo stick solid in here, but um, yo, I, I just want to say, I just came in this room to really just show support. Y'all know, like Toronto, like it's a, my favorite city that I'm not from. So, you know, I love all y'all in here. So, I want to see all y'all win. So, <laughs> really, Shout out academics, academics ayo, interview, fam. Ayo, 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 ayo. ayo, ayo forward for the ayo, interview. Yo, you need to, you, yo, 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 you need to go Google Casper. You gotta pull up on We Love Hip Hop for that interview. That's what you need to go do. Of course. You need to go Google Casper TNG and find out who I, I, I am. I see Vlad say you got some shit coming with you. And of course.
Yeah, man. Come we with us too. Ak knows. 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 Ak <laughs> Yo, academics, quick question before you bounce. Um, I, I heard you uh, talk in one of your previous podcasts that uh, one of your um, labels that you're signed to gave you a budget to sign artists. Would you ever consider exercising that in the Toronto scene? Have you seen any talent that catches your eyes? Besides Chosen. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I, I, I would absolutely do. You know, I think when, when, when I think about just signing artists, though, and I, I'm, I look at it from a different perspective than you guys, right? Because, like, you know, the reason why I love, like, like I just come in here to listen because it's like I cover hip-hop on such a large scale that you forgot what it's like to, to care about what's going on in a particular city, you know? So just hearing you guys, like, you know what I mean, whether it's little arguments or, you know, just kind of having some pride about your city, that that's dope. But, like, for me, if I was going to sign an artist... I'm looking at an artist. I don't care. I don't care where you're from. As long as you could, I want the biggest artist. I want. I want an artist that could cross over. So you know, it's like it, whether the artist is from Toronto, Ohio, shit. The, the artist could be from the UK. I want. I want the artist to be able to relate to the masses in the U.S. Because you know, I report charts every week. The, the charts we report is a U.S.-based charts. You know what I mean? So it's all about for me an artist. I would sign, say, from Toronto. It would matter if that artist music could cross over and translate. You know what I mean? And it don't mean mm -hmm. you can, like switch up and become some other person. I think people realize that now you could have you could have your own swag, and that shit could still translate. So it would be about any artist that could really translate. Appreciate the answer, man. Thank you for the insight. I mean, we really, we all. Really yeah, we gotta tap in for a full interview and talk to you on the on the podcast. Get the academic story and what's going on now with the podcast, everything that you got going on. Yeah, 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 yo, yo, yo Friday, I, I I tap into your shit without I'm trying to figure out like you know what I mean. You put me on a bad artist in the Toronto scene, you know what I mean? Obviously, you know I feel like I'm I'm cool with a lot of the the, the ones who are kind of like really popping, but like I like to hear about the up and coming ones because you know like even this whole hip hop shit. The, the, despite what city or whatever we talking about, like not all the time you see the same faces at the top and sometimes people get too big and, you know, cross over or whatever. Or sometimes, you know what I mean? Like I think this year, like, for example, like top five was having a run, then, you know, some unfortunate shit happens. So, you know, again, they always say one monkey don't stop the show. So it's not like, you know, you know, music just ceases to, to exist after that. You know, there's always going to be new faces, new buzz, you know what I mean? New waves and, I, I love it. Yeah, I, I love everything coming from a city. Mm. You said something kind of interesting uh, in the last couple of podcasts. You said um, the labels look at it these days as I'm not going to worry about if this guy's going to be hot because I'm going to send, I'm going to sign 10 of these guys. And if one of these guys hit, they're going to replace all of these guys that hit. Can you speak a bit about on that? Because you didn't really like uh, that from what I heard from yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I'll give an example. And I think, you know, yo, yo, shout out to Press if he's on there. But, like, all right, so I have a joint venture, right? And, you know, by just some of the, the very powerful people in the music industry, when they're explaining how they, they look at artists or they look at a region, they look at a sound, they look at anything that kind of has a group in, right? They're like, yo, we're going to just sign a bunch of them. But really, we want one person, as long as one of them succeeds and, like, really hits, it pays for the other 10 we sign. So it's like yeah. one of those things where it's like, put it like this, you know, hip-hop and how money goes when it comes to the labels. You know, and, and you know, obviously, yeah, I have the polys or whatever, whatever. But, like, when, when Pressa blows up, they want to sign 30 niggas from Canada. That's just how it goes. Mm. It's like that, it, becomes be it. Proof, it, it becomes proof of, yo, oh, shit. The, 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 this Canadian sound or whatever could, could could actually go. So, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you know, um, I know for me, uh, like, you know, I'm relating to, to, to just what you guys got going on there, but, like, for me, it, it's, it's an interesting mindset because, like, it's more about quantity. But for, like, you guys who are trying to, you know what I mean, you, you, again, you guys want to compete with the global scene, right? Like, that's a good thing for y'all because now there's more opportunities. Right. So as long as one person make it out the bubble, 
there's always going to be, you know what I mean, more opportunities for other people. And I, obviously, if the talent's there, you know what I mean, you know, I always tell artists, like, you know, no matter what's going on, y'all got to make sure y'all not doing dumb stuff and also be prepared with the music. Because at the end of the day, it's always going to be the music. You know what I mean? Mm. So, and as long as that happens, I think, you know, going into 2022, I think it's probably going to be more opportunities than ever for Toronto artists. You know, so it's like... I, I, I think it's a very positive thing, thing for for if you're in the city right now and you're trying to make music and you're probably just maybe right now you're only thinking about kind of getting lit within like, you know, your little region or whatever, and then eventually just getting lit throughout the whole city. That quickly could turn into all of a sudden, you know what I mean? You have 20 labels on your line trying to fly you out to New York, LA, because they're tuned in. I'm telling you this right now, they're tuned in. So... Mm. That's a good thing, and you know it's about keeping the music scene thriving. You know what I mean? And you know, obviously, like this COVID shit probably doesn't help help stuff too too much. But you know, I'm telling y'all right now, like compared to the visibility of the of the the Canadian or I'll just say Toronto music scene, as it come as it relates to how U.S. labels and hip hop treats it, it's way more. It's it's probably exponentially grown from a year ago. So. That's a good place, I think, for all y'all to be in. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. you know, like, for me, I remember one of the reasons why, you know, obviously there's some cultural similarity. I was born in Jamaica, if y'all don't know. So there's some cultural sim similarity between, you know, a, a lot of how, like, you know, Toronto culture is, because obviously there's a mix of, like, you know, Somalians and, and Jamaicans. And it's just a lot of, it's kind of like a melting pot a little bit. So, so obviously I kind of was drawn to that. But one of the main reasons I was drawn to, like, the music there is that, like rawness and authentic shit always gets the people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, in its best form and its worst form. For example, like Chicago Drill. Like that's you, you could call it one of the worst forms of authenticity, but it was authentic. It's always gonna get people who wanna hear some shit that just seems unfiltered, who who wanna hear some shit that just seems real to whatever the lifestyle is of that particular, you know what I mean, like um, neighborhood or, you know, like region. So that's what kind of, you know what I mean, brought me in. I'm like, yo, damn, dude. like it's different from U.S. shit, but like I can tell it's authentic to them. We have the mm. same, we have a lot of that too with like, you know, a lot of the music coming out of the U.K. as well. But what I see y'all doing in, in Toronto, I think people are being more drawn into that and it's growing for y'all. And, you know, obviously I have some of the biggest people in music that's from that region. I think everybody's just looking to y'all region to be like, yo, we got to give these guys an opportunity. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this shit's going to change and like kind of, you know, ramp up in the next year. But I think I think it's a good place right now for, for uh, Toronto music, I'm going to be honest. Facts. Well, we thank you. We, 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 we thank you for your words of wisdom, man. And we always appreciate you in here. So whenever you can drop by, man. Much appreciated. So thanks a lot, academic. Lucas, got any questions there? Friday, Friday. Um, quick question about shows. We were having a conversation on the last clubhouse about Toronto having a ceiling because one thing that we can't do in our own city is perform in Toronto. What do you think we could do to change that? Because I know like in Atlanta, even in the Bronx and all these different places where shit gets crazy, those guys can still at least perform even at a local venue, even if it gets crazy. But we can't do that over here. Um, yo, yo, th that's such a good point. I'm going to tell you why it's a good point. Because when you, when you kind of flush out the business model of the music industry, performing and shows is such a big part of it. Of course, streaming, of course, people talking about it, the media, but if there's no shows, and, and I'm gonna compare it to kind of what's going on in New York. This is why Atlanta's been thriving. And this is why even now during the pandemic, you're seeing places like New York. Like I, I, I'll, all right, I'll use I'll use Bronx or Brooklyn drills as an example. In New York, shows are pretty much shut down unless it's like big artists coming through big venues. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, like it, it's it's thriving online. Like oh, they're doing Brooklyn drill, Bronx drill. They're not performing. They're not doing shows, really. You know what I mean? It's like once in a while, right? Obviously, when it comes to like, like you know, Toronto, from what I see, this it, it, it makes it more complicated because it looks like it's a, 
look like it's like a, a politics thing. Like when I mean politics, like y'all government is is really on some restrict. I don't know what they got going on. Well, but- it's, it's a lot more strict up here than than the yeah, states. The- like, right, there's there's no messing about. The the gun laws are way stricter. We don't have people walking around buying guns from Canadian Tire up here or Walmart for that matter down there. So I feel like it's just there's more nonsense uh, policy with the police up here than. It's a lot more laxed uh, as we see down the border, as you see all your shootings and yeah. whatnot. And I'm not, I'm not for better or for worse. I'm not even talking. Well, I mean, maybe uh, the factors that probably affect New York, because what I'm saying is New York is having concerts, right? It's just, you know, I think they're they're smart enough to not let, or not smart enough, but they're, they're trying to be savvy enough to try to not let the people who they think are going to be violent have concerts. I just think when it comes to like, Canada as a whole, like with that COVID shit, the COVID shit is preventing like, you know, you know, they're way more lax over here in terms of like, you know, what you could do, you know, like even with COVID, like you go to, you go to uh, Florida, nobody wear masks, everything is open, Atlanta, like strip clubs, full contact, nobody cares about nothing called COVID, you get me? Like in New York, they're a little bit more restrictive, but you know what I mean? But, but, but as you see, there's so much more room for opportunity just from what you're explaining. Like, there's here, there's exactly. there. In Canada, in Canada, there's one place. Like, we're not going to fly out to Edmonton and have a show, or we're not going to fly out to Alberta and have a show. Or, like, maybe if you're very popping, such as press or the top guys in the city, you're going to fly out to Vancouver, maybe have a show in Montreal. But that's it for us. Those are three cities, you know what I mean? It's not a lot to work with. And so that's why I feel like a lot of the artists in this chat are frustrated because they only have so much room to wiggle. So when you when we sit here and you listen to you talk about this this opportunity in in uh, in the strip club there in Miami yada yada you just named ten times more the opportunity than we already have uh, in 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 Canada you know what I mean so it's a little frustrating for the artists in this chat and I get that and I feel like that's why they're asking you so much so just yeah no, no I, I I'll, I'll even bring it to to another level too you know like let me tell you this. Sometimes when people don't understand cultures, one thing they understand is like pe- most people are dick riders. People understand a wave. Like they, they, nobody wants to feel like they're, they're, they're being left out. And the visual, the visualization of seeing that like the music y'all are making translate into dope ass concerts is what will help the music start accelerating and catching on. You know what I mean? Again, it doesn't seem like it. Like again. If you're tapped in, you're like, yo, this shit is the wave. This shit is hot. This shit is like, yo, this is like, this is the vibe. But for somebody who's like, which, which this is the majority of music fans, they just want to go with the crowd. When when they see the concerts, you know what I mean? Like, oh, shit. Or when they see like, oh, shit, look look at so-and-so just selling out. Even if it's just, uh, 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 it could be a party in this hood or, or shit, this show or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? That visualization goes a long way into letting people know like, yo, this is an actual wave that you probably got to get invested in. So I think that's what's probably, you know what I mean? It's robbing the, the Toronto scene a little bit of, um, you know, um, that opportunity to like excel and like accelerate. Because I'm telling you when, like, I, I remember a lot of times when I was trying to check out like, you know what I mean? Different genre or, or music from different places or people like, yo, yo, you know, like, so and so artists, and the, I remember when they I first just got put up on Jacksonville artists and shit like that. You know what I mean? And like you know, I've been to Jacksonville a couple of times, but like you know, the 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 the, 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 the Jacksonville artists they mentioned, I never really heard about too much. And then mm. me trying to kind of catch on to like the wave they had there, man. When I saw the energy they had at the show, I'm like, oh, this is a real fucking thing. This is a movement. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where it's like, I think I think that's definitely necessary. I just don't know how. Toronto as a whole could kind of get around that. Because well, we, 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 kind of, we kind of saw you back in the summer. You kind of hosted a couple of Twitch events that were quite um, good, or for better or for worse, for the city. Do you see yourself maybe doing that again to try and put up a spotlight on the city in the sense of maybe hosting some Twitch events going into the new year with uh, Strictly Toronto Artists and getting some more dialogue such as we're doing here but as we know you have much bigger platform is that something uh you could set up for the toronto artists i know you and six buzz got that going last time but in, in terms of the new year is that something you could no of course not as i said man i'm i'm, I'm a I'm, I'm a supporter of um i'm just a supporter of the of the, of the uh toronto music scene man you know again it, it, listen I'm, I'm i'm cool with a with a bunch of people but i'm not 
you know, I try as best as I can. I'm not trying to pick no side or nothing like that. You know, I, I've realized it's very complicated politics, but I love it. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things that every time I've ever hosted it, it, it it's not like a chore. You know what I mean? It's something like I enjoy. I, I just feel like, you know what I mean? It's, I, I always tell people, right? It's like, yeah, like I happen to be one of the biggest platforms when it comes to like hip hop. But, you know, yo, I grew up in Jamaica. I grew up on dancehall. I grew up on, you know what I mean? Being a man, bone to killer, vibes cartel, Movado. You know what I mean? Alkaline now, you know, like all these artists, which, you know, again, maybe my platform, which people they'll come to because they want to see young boy and little baby. But that doesn't mean mm. me as a mm -hmm. person, I don't enjoy these other artists. And without trying to like, you know, just completely just like, you know, torpedo my platform at any opportunity that I could get to post about, like whether it's a Jamaican artist, because that that's a personal thing for me, you know? And, mm -hmm. and when I'm saying that I support like, you know, the Toronto music scene is like, as whenever I whenever I could do something for you know that shines a light just specifically towards the Toronto music scene, of course I want to do it. You know what I mean? So like you know I I was glad that my audience just like in general just like they fucked with they just fucked with like just all the different personalities and all the different stories of all the people um, and the artists from Toronto and you know they 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 loved it. You know what I mean? And and I was like oh shit because a lot of times what people don't realize. Like if you if you if you seen when I posted um, the the songs I listened to and again my platform has to kind of represent the people more than just my personal taste. But if you if you seen when I posted my personal list and what I listened to in this and third, you know like for example, Danso was one of them that's that's huge on uh, up there, right? So I'm listening to I think there's like three Alkaline songs, two Vibes Cartel mm -hmm. songs up, up in my list. But then also I think like number three or four, I think I had like press the song up there you know what i mean so again like a lot of these things these are this is what i bump when i'm in the car you know what i mean when i'm when i'm in the car like i got that I, yo i'm spinning i'm spinning press on repeat you know what i mean i'm bumping top mm -hmm. five you know what I mean? i'm bumping Northside benji you know what i mean i'm bumping like a lot of dudes from the city but it's a personal thing because like again maybe it's because i'm jamaican too but like i i, I love I love the culture that it's when I was in the hip hop music. No, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's a straight trap. And like, you know, trap is like trap. But like when I'm hearing like you guys, I, I hear culture. And that's one thing I realized, like, you know, I'm always just attracted to and addicted to like anything that kind of showcases culture. So, yeah. Um, so going back to the question, of course, you know, honestly, I, I really want to do like, you know, Man, I wish I wish everything was opened up, and I think me I think me and Buzz even talked about this, man. Like, yo, I, I want to come to I want to come to the six and like do some shit, like the right way, where mm -hmm. you bring it was quick last time here. And I don't know if that's a possibility, you know. Academics um, fast, let's go. No, man. I see. I don't even want it to be. <laughs> see, that's one of the things. Man, like, <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it, no? room, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's cool. But you see, here's the thing, like. The one thing with with like you know especially like the Toronto scene, I never want you guys to and no matter if y'all look at me as a big platform or not, I don't want y'all to ever think that I'm coming and just like trying to take over the vibe. It's like I'm a spectator and a, and a fan, so it's like I'm I'm one of the people who like man like I would rather like I would rather just be a supporter. I, I don't want to come and just throw my name on it. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's just in the academics takeover. You feel me? Like do you have do you have anything to say uh, about Vlad coming to set up shop here? Because there's been some rumors of him coming to set up shop in Toronto. Do you have any? I, I mean, I think that would be a good thing. The the only thing I, I would probably say is you know, um, I I guess it would be the more I've been involved and like you know paying attention to toronto i realized there's a way to be productive in a way you could easily you know still garner att attention but you're being destructive so you know it's one of those things where like you know I i'll highlight something i think vlad does good right i think vlad does a really great job of i was watching like like i'm i'm like you know doing some upgrades in my studio today and, and i just had something in the, in, on the background but one it was like a series of vlad clips and one thing he does good is like you know he gives the history like me and him me and him and adam we, we've talked before but like me and him specifically i remember us saying this about five years ago we're like yo like fuck what bt and vh1 and mtv 
are like we're the new we're the new that you know what i mean like we, I, I remember mm -hmm. we, we said it to the we said it to the team we were like yo vlad was like yo i'm like vh1 like i'm gonna give people the flashbacks and give people the history of shit and like even today i'm watching him i'm like yo he's he's like he's doing interviews with some niggas that was doing like you know what i mean doing some shit like before i was even like really born or leaving outside so i was like man like if if he came to the you, you know the Toronto scene and, and and really start putting some context to like you know where the music came from because I think we're having a well you just know, put, you guys put more preface behind what I said um there was actually Kijiji ads on uh, on the internet in Toronto of him actually setting up a physical studio here and uh, there is some job ads out here so I just want to give you a little bit of background on oh yeah no 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 but, but, but yeah that's what I'm saying it, it depends on like you know. If he's doing it like that, I think that's dope. You know, if you know, if he's gonna like really kind of give the context of, you know, for example, a lot of untold stories. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Yo, one of my favorite songs. It's probably on my like top like a hundred songs that I played because that's what Spotify gives you at the end of the year, like your top hundred most played songs. Man, I I just found out about um I found out about Bully this year. Like, I've been bumping Bully like crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you know yo. Fortunately, passed away and everything, but I'm like, man, I don't know too much about him, but I just know that these songs was hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, and I almost feel like, damn, man, I wish, you know, I wish I knew about this earlier. But I think that's where somebody like a Vlad, like, you know, if if I'm thinking Vlad's gonna do what Vlad does, Vlad's the person that's gonna interview everybody around Bully to to give you the story of Bully. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for someone like me who likes the music. I, I might get a different understanding of him and be like, oh, shit, oh, damn. This is the person behind the music, which I think that's the good part of it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I would be hoping for the best. I would, be, I would be thinking it would be things like that. Just really give more context. And honestly, that mm -hmm. brings people more into the, the scene, too. So Now, speaking more to yourself, you're at such a high level of interviewing. Now, there's only a few interviews I'm sure you're chasing now you're at the top of the game how close do you think you are personally to you know what's so funny yeah i don't even i don't even think i'll get a drink interview i don't even all right the, the only reason i think so is like you know and me and him we've had conversations but never about an interview um hip-hop media i always said it. and by the way you know salute to all any media outlet in here any media personality i love all you guys you know what i mean you know, of course, a salute to Friday and, and Chris. I see you. You know what I mean? Shit, you're you basically doing an interview right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, I see uh, finally, finally. Yo, let me get that fellow too. Sorry. Chris is finally getting his flowers. <laughs> no, but yeah. me, me and academics had an in person interview at the rec center in 2019. Don't get it twisted. It's on my YouTube page, but I've already got an academics interview. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, talk to you. No, so, 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 like, yeah, no, when it comes to like hip hop, and and this is one thing that I love about and I think this is why I fell in love with Toronto even when I went there. Like I just saw a bunch of people who despite you know like Toronto not being the epicenter of hip hop, just not making excuses and just doing it. And and Facts. whether it was just rapping or media wise, I'm like, I fuck with that. Cause I remember when people was telling me that yo, you have to do these things again in the media game, and I was just like, yo, what? And I was just like, yo, I'm about to just be at the crib and I'm about to just fucking outwork people and I'm just going to do some shit. So when I see like blogs blow up, whether it's Six Buzz or like, you know, Keep Six Solid, I'm like, yo, this is dope. But well, you said you said earlier in your career, I know in one of your interviews, you said, don't try this shit unless you're willing to give 10 years of your life to it. No, no, of course. No, of course. But but like, you know, to really answer the question with the Drake thing is like, like, Hip hop media now, and and this is why I I don't try to shit on no smaller outlet. I try to bring them up because again, it, it it can't only be me. You know, there's some people, and I don't know if maybe maybe you guys know some people in life in certain things or whatever. They want to be the only one. Nah, like like there's strength in numbers. You know what I mean? Like if you're the only one, you're called the exception. So there's really strength in numbers. Like and for me, I represent a new type of media, a media that's not controlled by the opportunities that were given to you by these conglomerates or you know like like basically like i don't even know if, it, it, it's like a lot of journalists their come up determines their opinion 
right? Like if somebody gave you an gave you a opportunity, like they're forever like you can't criticize them. And I think these days, like you know, fans are are creating outlets, and it's the rawest shit ever because you have no allegiance, like you don't have no bias. You just you only have the 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 only thing you care about is your like your audience, right? So again, and I'm taking mad long to answer this, but with the Drake interview, there's like a hierarchy. That's what that's why I call it. There's a hierarchy. There's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of red tape. I'm assuming. No, well, well, I don't think so. Like, you know, I mean, Drake could just say, I want to do an interview with you, right? And, and it'll just happen. But I don't put it out there and I don't even like think about it because I know like the older media dudes, it's like that's all they like, they, they all talk about it. Like, they all talk. You mean about like, are you, are you referencing Drink Champs? Are you referencing Joe Budden right now? No, well, I mean, drink, whether it's Drink Champs, I mean, they tease it like three times. Like, the, the, those those outlets and those like media like people like that's the validation for them and i love drake and you know what i mean like he's my favorite rapper and i'm glad that you know i i, I have a line to him that I, you know i could speak to him at times but i'll be okay if i never interview him you know what i mean like okay you know what i mean Again, I, I, I feel i feel you but i i do remember how excited you got when he joined your stream last year i remember yeah. that you do you remember do you remember that particular stream and you do you remember how hyped you got i just want to i just want to bring no, 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 no. True, but 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 that that was definitely because of it was like an acknowledgement of of like imagine imagine and I don't know who would this would be for like say the Toronto scene. Well, but like Friday if, got a follow from Drake, so I I'm sure he can speak to that, and I'm sure how he felt when he finally got that because I remember when Friday didn't have that follow. He made a few videos about how is Drake not fucking with the platform in the city. He got the follow. You know, I'm still waiting on mine, but that's another story. But Yo, uh, I just want to sure Drake. I'm pretty sure your wheeler. I'm pretty sure. Just to clarify, also, he he followed the business page, the We Love Hip Hop Network page, not not my personal page. Yo. But let me ask you a rhetorical question, Act, um, based on the Drake interview. Um, if Drake was to promise any media outlet to interview, you know, based on your relationship that you that you built with him so far, do you think that's something that he would like make a promise or just something that he would just dub eventually. I th I think Drake's moves very calculated, and honestly, I think he promised Joe Button an interview. Like you know, what I mean, I I think it's like whatever that fits the mood and mode he's in. Like I'm gonna be honest, I was surprised he didn't do an interview for this album. You know, like usually he has a lot to get off his chest. I think I think there's a lot of questions and things that he could talk about now, and and um he didn't he he still hasn't spoken. You know, so I think he's moving very calculated. Um, and I think whenever he moves to do an interview, it's usually at that moment, like he's going to pick whatever that's best for him. So like, I, I, I wouldn't even, if he said, yo, listen, yo, bro, we're going to do an interview at one point. I wouldn't take anything of it. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, of course I'll be excited, but it's it, like, Yo, I, I met Elliot Wilson the other day, right? I met him at the um, Salute to Rick Ross. I met him at the Dolphin Stadium. Um, and um, in, in Rick Ross is like little box suite. And um, I said to him, I'm like, yo, I hope you got, because like in conversation with, with them, it's like they're older journalists who are much more accomplished. And it was like, I could tell they're waiting for the next Jay-Z interview. They're waiting for the, like they interviewed Drake before, they're waiting for the next one. You know what I mean? I've never interviewed Drake, you know what I mean? And it's like, for them, it's like almost a, a thing. And, and and if you know anything about journalists, and this is why I, I, I have respect for them, you know, I have respect for that hierarchy because if you if you know um like say Angie Martinez and um Angie Martinez and um Jay Z, the, and this is to any rapper in here. The first the, the yeah. first, if you really want to go far in your career, pick one journalist you fuck with. Pick one. Just pick. You don't got to be the favorite one. Just pick one, and that journalist as you go along, you 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 help that journalist and have them help you. Because a lot of artists don't have PRs. A lot of artists mm. don't really have the systems in place that you're not looking crazy on the blogs, that you're, that that in the moments you need to be hot to sell records. Like, a lot of times people don't... These days it's about using each other. You know what I mean? People don't really know how to, like, cultivate a relationship. But if you really think about it, 
over time, like, and I remember someone called uh, Steve Stout yeah. time, and I remember he said, um, he said, yo, act. You know the reason why they can't fuck with you, and the reason why like you're forever in, in like you're embedded into where where hip hop is. He's yo, like, act. Go ahead. Yo, act. Who, who that? Yo, listen, yo, this is Moji. The reason why they can't fuck with you, you first started this shit, this fucking little interview shit, or fucking, you know what I mean? Chicago, whatever, Toronto, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? Fucking hip hop, fucking, you know what I mean? Study shit, whatever you want to call it. But yo, listen, though, I'm about to punch out. Shout out everyone in the city doing this thing, you know what I mean? Shout out everyone in Toronto making music, making the city look great, you know what I mean? Shout out Keeps Excited, you feel me? For putting this chat together, you feel me? Shout out everyone making their music, you feel me? And yo, listen, I'm about to be doing some interviews soon, so you don't know. Where's Friday at? Friday's in here. What up? Yeah, Tap in. You let's, get it, let's get it popping. Oh, I, I, I didn't even know you were <laughs> classic OG, <laughs> classic OG. <laughs> AK, the, the hunger's di the hunger's different in Toronto, man. The hunger's different because we've been waiting for so long for a spotlight, and I feel like that first spotlight came uh, when you did that little live on your Twitch, and you know we just want a little more. And you made a visit in 2019, and I'm sure when all this COVID shit's over, we'll sort of visit out again. But uh, yeah, Lucas is right. The hunger is. Oh man, like. Like you can be popping in Toronto and like you ain't really making money. Like there's it's a small market. Like I was saying this with Bundog the other day. Like I know motherfuckers want Juno's taking a bus. <laughs> like there ain't no bread here. You know what I'm saying? So like we have to focus on, you know, expanding out of the city and looking in, you know, breaking in America, Europe, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're just looking at how we build this bridge and, and keeping it moving. Yeah, and we, 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 we view you as one of those outlets, so any advice you share is, is great. Yeah, I'm, I, I, yeah, as I said, I just feel like you, you guys are on the right right wave, you know what I mean? I think you have the right people looking at you. And honestly, I'm going to keep it 100, I, and I don't want to take credit, but, you know, I felt like, you know, especially after those streams, I seen, like, you know, whether it's outlets like No Jumper or whoever else, they started like saying, oh, th this artist is hot. They, they started to get interviews going on, which that's the overall goal, you know? And and I think it'll be up to the point where it's just about the music, at, the, you know what I mean? Like there's gonna be songs that y'all have that is gonna bubble out. And those are the songs that's just gonna, it's gonna run. So, I mean, like as much as like, even sometimes y'all say like, I gave y'all a look or whatever the case is, I feel like y'all were already there. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That's how I look at it. Like, I feel well, like- Well, inside looking out, I feel like a lot of people would disagree just with that thing, because it feels like we've only had two or three people make it out of the crab in the bucket kind of system, which would be Preston and Smiley right now, and we're still waiting for a few others. So we appreciate that comment, but I feel like a lot of people sitting on the stage is like, bro, your first look in, in, in the summer was, was greatly appreciated, and that's the most we've had in a long time. Yeah, nah, nah. I, I, I really think this next year is gonna feel different in terms of what it means to be like hot in the city, and then what does that translate to outside of the city? I, I just feel like there's additional eyes on y'all, so you know that. Now, when you said that, are you insinuating you've heard stuff in the in, in different labels in the U.S. saying that, or are you just uh, saying that uh, in the sense that you? you're no, 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 100%. Like, I mean, like, like there's labels. Look at Hey, you, you have to realize, right? Like, like it's it's not that much of a of a stretch that label like I believe I believe labels probably are trying to either sign Okay. I'll say this in short. What comes across my desk in terms of marketing right because i do I, I do marketing i work with every label when it comes to marketing right right around the time where i even did those streams every label came to me with a toronto artist that they were looking at and the can we name some names here can we or no or no i'm sorry i just a lot of people just heard that I rather not say because I, I I don't know the nature of their business, you know. But but it, it, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, 
the the question that they they were having and you know I always I always tell people this labels are horrible at marketing right the, the question they had in the conversation like I had with all of them they were like hey so how do we market a guy like this because you know what they don't understand culture right so they they only could understand if there's a hot song so if there's a hot song it's easy to market right but if they don't understand the culture like for example if it's an Atlanta artist they know how to market them right okay cool let's mm-hmm. get a person this person okay it's gonna be some let's get him a song that's gonna move in the strip club like there's kind of like a marketing you know like almost like template but then I, I think there was a question and a lot of questions of okay so how do we market these guys who are coming from Toronto and is it a thing where we play off the Drake thing or is it a thing that we just kind of play off their sound? Is it a thing we play off the difference in their culture um, as opposed to, you know, for example, like Atlanta culture? And I think, and I had- What was your response to that? Say again? What was your response to that? Like they asked you that and then you said what? Well, I mean, they got to get to know, they got to get to know the actual culture. You know what I mean? Like a, a lot of times when it comes to marketing, they want the easy answer, you know, like for example, um, take a, take a Nardo wick, take, take a K flock, take, you know, take whoever who blows up and, and, and a label. The first thing they think is, okay, so how do we get this guy to be a mainstream artist? Not understanding what that artist is and that, Hey, maybe, their music at like you can't just remove them from doing the music they're doing and just put them to some cookie cutter shit you know what i mean and you gotta Mm. gotta let it play out so one of the things is like you gotta understand their culture and understand the 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 path they're going on and then also be patient you might have to wait till you know you gotta wait you might you might have to you can't just grab an artist from toronto just throw them in la with a bunch of like people and be like okay cool they got a song that sounds like Atlanta, but we got a couple good features on it. It's going to go. No, you might have to wait for like an attachment or some shit. You know I mean? You got to wait for something that sounds like kind of authentic to, you know what I mean? Um, where that person's even from. So that was the advice I gave. But what that told me is that there was, there were clearly eyes, um, at least from in the a, city. Of course, a hundred percent. And I, and I think if you ask all the artists, you know, if, if they're all going to be honest, I don't know if they would. They would probably also admit that there were more opportunities in terms of, like, people hitting them up. Like, Yo, hey, listen, let's take a meeting or whatever the case is. Like, 100%. That's yeah, a fact, fact because there's a whole bunch of even the Canadian um, versions of the label, Sony, Universal, all these different places <coughs> who have signed guys from over here. As well as the American versions, but it just doesn't always work out. Hey, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll even give you, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, this little. I won't say too much, but I'll give you this joke. It's the first time, and, and I've dealt with the, the Canadian version of like you know, as I said, I, I like part of what I do is we we do marketing, so we talk to pretty much every label. We talk to the UK leg of certain labels, the Canadian leg. We even talk to even the like you know um african you know portion that usually these deals with afro beats or whatever um and i remember talking to there's this rep that that's i won't say what label and but she's a rep on the the canadian side for this for this label she hits me up and she's like yo they finally just gave us a fucking budget to like promote like some of our canadian artists and i'm like oh that's dope but before they were like, wow, they had this good market. Finally, you said. Yeah, but do you see how like pathetic that sounds to us? We're like, finally, bro, we've had talent for all this time, and now it, like, finally they're looking over with their telescope kind of deal, you know? No, no, you're hundred percent right about that. Hundred percent right. But like, you know, it's it's one of those things where like, yeah, it, at least it happened, you know. But <laughs> I understand. It, you. That's to show you that like at least things have changed a little bit, and at least like eyeballs are like. You know what I mean? At least on an industry level are saying, yo, let's see what's going on. Yeah, no, I've done the label runs in the U.S., man. They're super tapped in. Do you see yourself um, ever creating a top 10 list out of Toronto, Hack? I know Friday had a go at it and, you know, maybe he regrets it, but uh, do you ever see yourself kind of diving in and maybe 
making a top 10 list. I know that would probably make a, a, a shine mm. a lot of light on the city. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't get as much heat from it because you're not from the city, you know, like, like credit Friday for giving a crack at it. You know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> you know how that went. So I feel like, I feel like, I feel like if you did it, like there'd be a lot less to say from the city and more in the sense that it'd be like, damn man, like, fuck. Hey, okay, these are the people I'm going to, the, the people in the U S be like, these are the people I'm going to try and find for new artists is, and kind of start listening to. Do you see yourself doing that maybe in 2022 to help us out, throw us a bone? Now, listen, it was, you gotta stop using this throw us a bone thing. Like, listen, there's, I'm, I don't, I don't ever look at like yeah, I'm bro, you're making a man himself so what? desperate, bro. Like, yeah, why you, like don't make it sound bad, man. Sure. Yo, why you making it seem like we're begging or some shit? It's in this bitch, my nigga. Oh, All right, <laughs> my bad, my bad. Roadrunner, get at him, bro. My nigga, this is Toronto, my nigga. Yo, my nigga, listen, my nigga. Yo, everyone needs to just stop fucking being like, oh my god, yo, this needs to pay attention. Yo, just make hits, my nigga. Pressa did it. Smiley did it. Stop making excuses, my nigga. Go make a hit, Facts. bro. That's fair it, enough, bro. fair enough. Hi, right, Chris. Yo, don't make us look bad, Corona. What the fuck? Yeah, Chris, man? don't make us look bad, man. Make Not us look bad, bad, fam. Throw us a <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see how this went for me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Ask for permission before you use those. Nah, bro. It's only because he's not from Toronto. That's why we understand. We understand. We understand. We get it. Because he's from Montreal. Maybe they move that over there. But nah, my nigga. We're not throwing no bones over here. We're working, my nigga. That's it. Toronto, we just stay working. That's it. Everybody just drop hits. That's it. No need to no handouts or nothing. Everybody just go get it. Gang shit. Niggas know how we rocking. Public service announcement. Toilet pin two times. Yo, DJ Academics who asked who's the hottest nigga in the city. Nobody said my name. All you niggas is disrespectful. Come on now. You guys know who's the hottest, man. Yo, Academics. Search up my new track. <laughs> Send this guy to the gulag. <laughs> Send this guy to the gulag. <laughs> Send him to the gulag. Yo, yo, yo I, I will answer that, though, like, in terms of the, um, the like, a list. Yo, if if I was to put out a list, it would like number one. I just wouldn't be arrogant enough to just sit here and just be like, "Yo, these are the mans I listen to." So this, nah. I, so if it was gonna be like that, it, it would be like how you know how Double XL do they shit. So I would probably be like, "Yo, listen, let's just get a fucking committee, Six Buzz Friday, Team Six, just get a bunch of people really from the city and like, yo, it could be we just put it all into one like a bunch of votes." But that's the only way I would put out a list. I wouldn't just put out a list on like personal base. I, mm. I still think I'm learning. Uh, so you know the ramifications of me putting out a list while not being like a expert is like you know what I mean it's gonna be a slap in the face of people who really doing doing it who might get left out. So you know if anything, I would just extend the platform to everybody who and and that is voted up type shit. And yeah, that would be academics list that's contributed by y'all. But at least you know I could put it out to a bigger audience. But you know. Uh, I, 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 I heard Friday put out a list of getting on his ass, man. <laughs> yo, Friday, you let Friday put up the list up in there. Makes sense. This is solid, yo. yo Friday this put is a blessed, bro, yo. Casper should have been in there. That Casper should have been in there. Yo, there 2022, was, yeah. don't worry. There's some people on there that you open my eyes to still. So shout out you for it. You see the like thing is with this? Is this all about the best <laughs> 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 No, not yeah, no, 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 Friday's back. But if you have the gut to press send and then put your opinion out there for the for the people to to judge you or whatever, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't listen to everybody's music on the list, but like I said, I'm going based on impact, based on the amount of like people who are fucking with their shit. You know what I'm saying? And like the different accolades they got. If I was to go off my personal opinion, there'd be a lot of 30 plus and 40 year olds in there. You know what I'm saying? And that's irresponsible. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, by the way, and, and, and I'm gonna shout out Buzz for this because really, you know, when 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 we did the uh the whole Twitch thing and he said, Yo, act, I'm gonna get the hot artist in here and we're gonna do it. He put me onto a lot of people too. So you know, you know, shout out to Roadrunner, mm. Honcho, AR Paisley. Like honestly, yeah. like I got into, I got into all y'all music really because of the stream and shit. Y'all were telling me live, like, yo, yo, play this song. And then after the stream, I started like you know start real pre and you guys music and shit. So you know that shit's dope. And even Bundog, I met that nigga in person, man. Your Bundog, man, you here? Shh. <laughs> He's here. Nah. 
Yeah, no, that those uh, those Twitch streams definitely helped us as a city, you know, as a whole. Yo, just tell Buzz to set another one up, man. That's what we got to do. Where's that nigga Buzz? Yeah, he yeah, he's not in here no more. You, you know what, though? I feel like even after those Twitch streams, like, man's got more competitive in a good way, you know? That's good, though. Yeah. What but he's saying I, there's a lot of there's a lot of artists in here. You can get familiar with some in here too. My name is Sheriff. What are you yeah. saying? No, I'm hey, saying I, actually I some big clubhouse thing. like that. But yo, 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 keep six like like throw a couple of days music up, up on on that little that top screen thing that I could like click it. I can't lie. Keep six is a golden. Shout out to Keep Six Solid, man. For yeah, bringing go check, together, six, you know? go check out that bush, man. Go check out that bush. A whole lot of talent in the city. You know check what I'm out saying? Bush, six man. Solid bringing it in. Shrimp, he wasn't in the Twitch here. There's Money Boy. There's beer people that weren't in the Twitch here, you know? It's Hancho. Beer people, fam. Let's line up the next one for January, yeah? Got to lock yo, in the right way. Stop forgetting about me, fam. Like, got to lock in the right way. Yo, yo, who was that? Who was that? 724 Cap. 724 Cap was here. Black Boy Twitch is here. Everybody. Yeah, I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, Sam G's here. Fuck. Yeah. Shut up. You know, you know man, sick man. people's in the motherfucking Sick cut. people's here. Yeah. Fuck. Jazz Cardi. Yeah. Everybody. Shut up. Boulevard out Biz, nigga. Boulevard yeah, Biz is here. <laughs> yo, I'm going to tap in with you soon, yo. I'm, Fuck I'm, Toby, I'm yo, Toby. Here, yo. We need to get yeah, Toby. Yeah, we need Toby. Here, we need Toby. Yo, yo, yo. No Sam G. Yo, we're going to go there in three days. Big New shout out to Lucas. Big shout days, out to Keep Six Solid. Shout out my guy Lucas. No you know, big shout out to for the man for the city Same. too. That's a Big fact. people yeah. dropping a new video January 2nd. I love all you guys. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you guys later. But big shout out to Lucas. Keep Six Solid Academics. Thank you guys for even doing this for the city. No flow. Yo, Ak. Real shit. Real shit. Shout out Keep Six Solid. Big things is going in. Your act is still in this, or you are you caught? Are you boxing a fool? He, he's here, he's here, but his no, no, I'm not. I'm here, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to vibe with y'all. I mean, I'm listen, y'all don't got to just interview me the whole time. I'm just trying to like listen. I, I just be here Stop for pressing the man. I love y'all. Nah, we, we need the American <laughs> perspective, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm here for that. It's all good. Yo, bro, black boy, what's good, G? Yo, yo, act. There's a lot of unsigned. There's a lot of unsigned underground, underground talent in the fucking in the convo, right? So, a lot of times artists want to do the crossover from Canada to to the states. Like they're trying to be get, getting into the mecca of like New York. Right? You feel me? So, but a lot of times it's just a lot of barriers. Whether it's like fucking, they don't have enough capital to be out there for too long, or or fucking, they just don't know how to go about things. Cause they don't have a team behind them. What are some tips you could give some of the artists that are looking to make that jump from Toronto to the States? I mean, that's such a, uh, that's probably such an important question because, um, the goal is probably to, you know, come out here and get a pretty decent record deal that you could be in positions. And really it's not just about a record deal, just for money. You know, it's, it's like, record deal like uh, i be telling people these days like yo the labels run shit so it's like you know theoretically you could be independent and go crazy and just like you know d do it like russ but like for the most part like especially if, if you don't have that already um their fan base to like support you to that level that like for example it's few artists that Spotify is going to pay attention to if a label's not telling them about. You know what I mean? Like you got to be going so crazy that the that the the, the DSP or whoever is like, yo, yo, who is this guy, right? Which which honestly is going to be very few people. So it's one of those things where I'm going to be honest with you. This is why, like you know, in the U.S., I, I don't know what the solution would be in like you know Canada because obviously you got to travel, you got to do this, all this shit is like you know expensive, especially if you got to, yo, let me go to let me go to L.A. for a few weeks and try to you know do a few collabs, maybe do a couple of means. It's all about networking. A lot of music is networking. Like I know in the US, this is where a lot of people, you know, 
they, their funding usually comes through like some type of production deal that they have before like a label deal you know like uh, as unfortunate as it sounds you know um what you could do on the internet and you could do without investing yourself only goes so far so at a certain point when you gotta move around you gotta go meet people you gotta go be in places where if, if you're trying to cross over like as much as you think that you being hot in toronto and just being online in toronto is gonna make you cross over no like you, you kind of gotta go around some shit. so in that situation unfortunately you probably gonna need some funding you know what i mean and you know again however you get it whether it's like a big homie or maybe you somebody who, who believe in you kind of give you some money to to fucking you know kind of invest in yourself or man they, they, they like in the u.s what, what i'm saying is like there's a lot of people that they do like what's called a production deal where it's like yo listen we believe in you but we know the steps it you're gonna need to take to make it will fund you to get to that point of where you get that deal right so you know it's just being cognizant about what that is so um i don't know what the, the exact answer is for you know everybody who's in um toronto who's thinking about hey listen yo man i need to i don't know like for example like a month ago there was art basel like that would that would be a cool that would be a cool weekend for you to be in miami you know what i mean or i don't know say it's the bt awards or whatever and you be like yo hey i want to stay out there for like two weeks and maybe i could Oh, I know this rapper because we communicated online. I could probably do a track with him. I could do this, blah, blah, a little networking. Yeah, you're going to need a little bit of budget. And again, it would be great if everybody could fund themselves. But like, you know, unfortunately, that's just not the, that's not the way everybody's set up. So hopefully um, what I think is going to happen is, is there's going to be a lot of production companies um, you might call them record labels, but they're pretty much production companies that's going to pop up. Like, I'm going to be honest, I think with, with, if he doesn't already, I think I think Six Buzz should have a production company where it's like, yo, listen, hey, I know you're like the whole city believes in you, but you might just need some money, blah, 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 to keep the operation going on until we get you signed to Atlantic. Atlantic going to sign you for two, three million dollars. But right now you might just need a hundred thousand to survive for the next six months or a couple of months in living and and regular shit. So again, th that's where these other entities kind of like, you know, pop up. And um, I'm telling you how it is done in the U S I, I don't know the exact, um, the exact uh, like option or solution for, for like Toronto yet. But I mean, just giving an example of what I think should happen. There's a bunch of good distributors who fuck with Toronto, like believes really dope. Uh, create music group fucks with a lot of Toronto artists, so that's like a kind of in-between situation. <laughs>